You say there are demons and spirits in your mind, 1,200 feet below the surface of the earth. For this much money, I'd like to see them. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Frightened, Miss Wong. Quick, you come here in the room. Why are you so sneaky? It's a matter of great, great secret. Does Mr. Paladin wish to see me? No, no, he already left early this morning. Quick, you come inside. Oh, lady in charge, tell Miss Wong to hurry this morning. Many room to make ready for new guests. Come on in. Matter oh. of great importance will take only one minute of precious time. Oh, precious time. Look. Ah, papers with much American writing. That's all? Papers belong to Hey Boy. We'll make him very rich Chinese. Oh, why so? Our American writing say Hey Boy own two share of stock in silver mine. Worth very much money. In few months may be worth hundreds of dollars. Oh, paper such as these very expensive to buy? Oh, no, no, no. Our uh, Mr. Paladin may gift it to <gasps> Hey Boy. Gift? Mm-hmm. Very important man who is owner of mine give Mr. Paladin 50 shares of stock for do special job. Where is Mr. Paladin? Mr. Paladin leave this morning to go to silver mine in Virginia City. And before he leave, he give me two share of same stock. He's good? Oh, he's, uh, he's good. Mr. Paladin, very generous. Oh, yes. <laughs> I keep stock papers locked in special drawer here in Mr. Paladin's room. It's big secret. Why you tell Miss Wong big secret? Oh, uh, uh, someday when stock worth uh, much money, uh, perhaps... Uh, uh, hey, boy, share with Miss Wong? You mean, hey, boy, and Miss Wong? Oh, uh, maybe, yes? Ah, uh, yes, uh, maybe. Oh, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Everywhere you go, across the country trip or across the street party, you carry the fun with you when you own a Columbia Stereophonic High Fidelity Phonograph. There's a marvelous selection of seven new portable models in smart new color combinations at your Columbia Phonograph dealer from which you may choose. Each one is a masterpiece of design and beauty. More quality, more features, and more styling have been built into these sturdy portables than ever before. How much fun you'll have enjoying all the wonderful new sound of stereo records. Regular records take on new beauty, too, when played on handsome Columbia portables. You'll be amazed at the big console sound that is reproduced by Columbia portable stereophonic high-fidelity phonographs. You'll thrill to the excitement of Stereo One by Columbia, number one in the wonderful world of sound. And Columbia portables are economical, too. Prices start as low as $24.95. See them and hear them at your Columbia Phonograph Dealer. Samuel T. Curry owned two of the largest silver-producing mines in the Comstock Lode. He had hired me to help him solve what he called a peculiar puzzle. I knew nothing of the details, but accepted the job on the strength of a generous fee and the chance to visit Nevada's mushrooming metropolis, Virginia City. It was almost sundown when I boarded Mr. Curry's private car in Reno on the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. His canary-colored coach was lavishly furnished with thick, bright carpeting, drawn silk shades, a crystal chandelier, and even a marble bathtub. Mr. Curry, his wife, and I enjoyed a festive dinner of quail and champagne as the train rounded the many curves on the crookedest rail line in the world. Won't you have some more champagne, Mr. Paladin? No, no, thanks, ma'am. I'm afraid I'm not much for drinking champagne. <laughs> yeah, would you like some straight whiskey, Paladin? 
Uh, Irish. Oh, that sounds mighty good, Mr. Curry. If you're going to have some, I'll join you. Mm, it's right over here in the cabinet. Oh, I just love champagne. Mr. Curry imported this specially for me. It came on a ship all the way from France around Cape Horn. Cases of it just for me. Oh, well, that was very nice of him, Mrs. Oh, Curry. Oh, he's good to me, all right. Let's me have everything I want, except what I want most. Now, Emma. He won't let me go and live in Paris like Mary Bowers does. She has a big home over there and everything. The toast of the continent. Mm, now, 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 Emma. Mr. Paladin ain't interested in our little family squabbles. Him and me has got some important talking to do. Oh, I know what you're going to talk about. Ghosts. Do you believe in ghosts, Mr. Paladin? <laughs> no, ma'am, I don't. Oh, well, that's too bad. You're such a handsome man, too. Oh, well, uh, I, I know a lot of people who do believe in ghosts. But so. Mr. Curry doesn't either. It looks like you hired the right man, Sam. Yeah. Now, why don't you go in the bedroom and take a nap, Emma? You'll feel better when we get Virginia City. I feel fine. I'm going to have another glass of champagne. Well, <laughs> uh, then would you be so kind as to sit in that chair over there and read a book or something so as we can talk alone? Oh, all right. Always talking business. Everywhere we go, always business. Well, what's this about ghosts, Mr. Curry? <clears throat> well, it all started about a month ago, after the big fire in my consolidated Nevada mine. You hear about that? No, I didn't. Uh, it was a big one. We lost 45 men. 45? Well, that's terrible. How'd the fire start? Now, we don't know for sure. Probably one of the men left a candle stuck against a timber. Now, you've seen big fires on the surface of the earth, ain't you? I mean, big ones? Yeah. Then you know how frightful they can be. But a fire hundreds, thousands of feet below the earth in a mine, uh, that's a terrible... Terrible beyond words. Well, I can well imagine. Well, sir, it, uh, it was a lucky thing we were changing shifts about the time it broke out, or we'd have lost more men than we did. I was down in San Francisco at the time. When I got up here, it was all over. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are you laughing at, Emma? <laughs> Celebrated jumping frog in Calaveras County. Oh, that Mark Twain sure is a funny man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, have a cigar, Paladin. Oh, thank you. I... I suppose the ghosts you mentioned came after the fire. Yeah, but not at first. After a few days, we got some of the men to go back to work. Cleared out the charred wood, retimbered most of the drifts and crosscuts. But then a peculiar thing happened. The men started complaining of ghosts. <laughs> what did these... <laughs> what... What did these ghosts look like, Mr. Curry? Oh, they never actually saw one, I guess, but the men said they heard somebody groaning and laughing. Sometimes all their candles would go out at once. Well, a sudden wind blast could cause that. Why, sure, but then one man said he felt somebody's hands around his neck. All kinds of crazy things. I just can't pay men enough money to go down and work in that mine. Well, I presume, then, Mr. Curry, that... That you've hired me to look into this ghost business. Well, if you're willing to do it and you clear this mess up for me, I'll pay you with 50 more shares of stock in Consolidated Nevada. Now, how much do you think your stock will be worth when you get the mine working again? Uh, I want to tell you something, Paladin. Only three people know about this. Emma, uh, her brother Dan, he's my superintendent, and myself. Before that fire broke out, our main shaft had reached the 1,200-foot level. As soon as the men had cut a drift at that level, Dan and me went down to get some more samples. I think we tapped the biggest bonanza ever found under Sun Mountain. The highest assay says it's worth 600 a ton. Wow. No wonder you want to get the men back in the mine. Sam, did you know that Mark Twain used to live in Virginia City? Except his name was Sam Clements then. <laughs> yes, Emma. Uh, Paladin, when we start taking that hour up to the surface, your stock may be worth 500 a share. Are you willing? Mr. Curry, you just bought yourself a ghost chaser. <laughs> Oui. 
Winston tastes good like a cigarette should because... There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter. And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. Filter blend means fine tobacco, filter blend up front. And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. Filter blend is a mighty good reason for you to smoke Winston. Because it means tobacco's specially processed for filter smoking. A Winston secret. You get Winston's own pure white modern filter, plus the rich, delightful flavor of fine tobacco. There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter. And the fun you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. And makes Winston taste good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. That night, I was the guest of Mr. and Mrs. Curry in their palatial Virginia City home. The next morning, we took a carriage to the Consolidated Nevada Mine, located in the northeastern part of the city where most of the larger mines are found, their main buildings resting above the richest silver deposits in the world. In the superintendent's office, I met Mr. Curry's brother-in-law, Dan Castleberry, who said that he would accompany me into the mine. We boarded the hoisting cage, and the engineer lowered us down into the main shaft. You ever go down a mine before, Mr. Fallon? No, not one this large. We got 12 different levels in the consolidated, 100 feet apart. The Humboldt mine next to ours has 14 levels. Yeah. You know, if you could hoist this mine out of the ground and stand it on the surface, it'd make quite a tall building, wouldn't it? <laughs> it'd be the tallest I've ever seen. Are there any men working down here today? No, sir, not this morning. We only have 12 men brave enough to work for us at all. They come on in the afternoon. Can't get much work done in a mine this size with just 12 men. Just a little maintenance on the timber is all. We used to carry 300 men a day. Regular ghost town down here now, though. With real ghosts, too. Have you come across any? I've heard them. You'll hear them, too. Which level you want to stop at first? Well, how about where the big fire started? That'd be the next stop, 700 foot level. I'll ring engineer. This is it. Hey, keep your lantern high, you can see better. Hey. Big tunnel. Yeah, this drift's about eight feet high. These charred beams are sagging quite a bit. They need replacing. I mean, you don't keep the timbers up. The pressure of the earth puts a lot of strain on them. It don't hurt, though. You get a lot of warning from a cave-in. Yeah. What's that noise? Look down at your feet. Oh, oop. Mm, rats. Best friend of mine I ever had. See that one cock his head up to you? They think we brought him something to eat. Where do they get food down here? Mostly scraps from lunch pails. Oh. Pickens been kind of lean lately, though. Some of these little boogers are regular pets. They real help to us when there's about to be a cave-in. They give us plenty of notice. How's that? Oh, the way they scamper about, uneasy like, looking for a place to hide. Uh, there's a cross cut up ahead. You want to walk through there, look around? How far does this main drift go back? About 20-odd yards or so. Comes to a dead end. On the other side of the wall is the Humboldt mine. Hey. Listen. Oh, I swan. They're hoisting the cage up. Somebody signaled the engineer from down here. And we're not alone. Somebody else is down here with us. It can't be, Pallet, and there's only one entrance, the main shaft. And we're the only ones to come down since yesterday afternoon. Now, quiet. Listen. There they go. Uh, sounds like it's coming through that cross cut. Let's go. Wait a minute, Pallet. If we go through there and our lanterns get blown out, we'll never find our way back. There ain't no telling what'll happen. It won't be any safer here. Are you coming with me? I ain't staying here alone. All right, come on. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, they 
start. Yeah. All right. Come out. Show your faces. How you doing, Dan? Well, if, if you ain't busy, give me a hand. I'm with you. It's about I can't see what I'm doing. Uh, I got him. I got him. Out. Yeah. All right, see if you can find the lanterns. Then we'll get these ghosts up to the surface and find out who they are. Lately, we've been hearing a lot of talk about the new THI. THI stands for Temperature Humidity Index. It's a new wrinkle from the Weather Bureau. Here at CBS Radio, we have an LI, Laughter Index. The LI is at its peak every weekday evening in a great hour of comedy entertainment that reaches you right here on this station. Among the headliners on our LI are those veteran chortle champions, Amos and Andy. Every evening, Monday through Friday, hear Amos, Andy, the Kingfish, and all the other wonderful characters that people the Amos and Andy Music Hall. There's another Andy in CBS Radio's Laughter Index, Andy Griffith, star of the Broadway musical hit Destry Rides Again. On CBS Radio, Andy Griffith rides again and again over the strange doings of his fellow man in mischievously droll fashion. And rounding out the Amos and Andy Music Hall and Andy Griffith, laugh to the antics of Burns and Allen and Bob and Ray. You'll find them all on Evening Comedy Time, keeping CBS Radio's laughter index high as a dizzy kite. Dan found the lanterns and we made our way back to the main shaft. He carried the limp form of the man I had tussled with and I forced the other one along with a hammer lock. The engineer had lowered the cage back to our level after he had found it empty on the false alarm hoist. On our signal, he brought us up to the sunlight and fresh air. Mr. Curry was still in the office when we got back. All right, you get on in there. Uh, who are these men, Paladin? Your ghost, Mr. Curry. Throw him over on the bunk, Dan. Looks like he'll be out for a while. Yeah. As for you, have a seat in that chair. Mr. Curry? Ever see this man before? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Have you, Dan? No, they never work for us. Now, where'd you find them? In the mine, yelling like banshees. Dan and I followed their voices and they jumped us. Huh. Now, what's your name? Uh-uh. Speak up, mister. I'll work you over like I did your partner. Uh-uh. Well, you heard, Mr. Curry. Now, what's your name? Don't matter. How did you get in the mine? Who sent you down there? No, no, I can't tell. They'll kill me. They won't get a chance. I'll do it for them. Uh, all right. I'll tell you. All right. Now, who did it? The Humboldt mine. I'll work for them. How'd you get over here? Weeks ago. We drilled through your side at the 1,200-foot level. Mr. Belter, the owner, came down and said he was going to look around. He waited till everything was quiet and went over. I guess he found you had a rich vein, that he took some samples. Then he had the connecting hole caved in with dynamite. Yeah, I think I know the rest. That darn fool Belcher started the fire, too. No, sir, Mr. Curry. We didn't start the fire. That's something that just happened. But after it was all over, we drilled through one of the upper levels and started our ghosting. Mr. Belcher had us do that. I guess it seemed to fit in after all those men were killed in the fire. Yeah, Belcher knew I had a bonanza, so if he scared all my men off, he could take what he wanted. That... Cheatin', fuzzy snake. I'll sue him for every penny he's got. What do you want done with these men, Mr. Curry? Send them back to Belcher. No, no. Don't do that. He'll kill me, sure. All right, I don't care. Turn them loose. I got no use for them. It's Belcher I'm going after. Now, right now, I'm going down to San Francisco and get my lawyer started on this. You care to go with me, Peloton? <laughs> I'd like that very much. Oh. oh, I almost forgot. Mrs. Curry told me to invite you to the big railroad ball tomorrow night here in Virginia City. Maybe you'd rather stay over for that. Well, uh, if it's all the same to you, Mr. Curry, uh, I'd just as soon head back to San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, I don't say as I blame you. Oh, by the way, since Emma will be staying here, 
I'll see to it that we get steak on that train <laughs> instead of that quail and plenty of Irish whiskey. Now, that's one trip I'm going to look forward to, Mr. Curry. Oh, Mr. Paladin, welcome home. Thank you, hey boy. Uh, you leave the bags outside? In the court. Would you get them for me, please? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin. Yes? Uh, did you see Silver Mine in Virginia City? Uh, the one which belonged with uh, stock papers? The Consolidated Nevada? <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, uh, what do you think? Uh, we make you lots of money? Well, we'll have to wait and see, hey boy. It could be in a month or so that your shares, your two shares, will be worth $1,000. Oh, thousand dollars, thousand dollars! Oh, Missy Wong going to be very happy when Hey Boy comes rich. <laughs> oh, thousand dollars! Oh, Hey Boy. Car owners, here's news about a revolutionary new product by the makers of famous Caseite. It's new Caseite 3C, a heavy-duty crankcase concentrate for use in all engines. Added to your motor oil, Caseite 3C with Barryman quickly stops hydraulic valve lifter noises, cushions and smooths the engine. It cleans your engine and keeps it clean. Caseite 3C gives protection against acid, rust and corrosion too. Add to the oil every 2,000 miles and you'll have a tough oil that won't thin out. Oil that cushions the load on every working part, cuts down friction, wear, and noise. With Case I 3C in the crankcase, gas and oil mileage increases, and your engine has more pep and power. Remember, you get results with Case I 3C or double your money back. At your service station, garage, or car dealer now, only a dollar and a half. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Mr. Paris. Featured in the cast were Bart Robinson, Harry Bartell, James Nusser, and Helen Klebe. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>